Hey, you guys. So we're going to close out all of 2 Corinthians. We had stopped on a few verses of chapter 8. Because my storage space had cut off on me, you guys. With the videos. Because some were uploading and some were just like, it got, you know, full. So um, we're just basically going to close out what we would have did yesterday right now. And I'm just going to go back to 8 and read those other few verses. And we'll just um, go to 13. Okay, so chapter 8. Moreover, brethren, this is a collection for Christians in Jerusalem, and Paul urges generosity. Okay, the collection for Christians in Jerusalem, we'll read that first. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints and this they did not as we hope but first gave their own selves to the lord and unto us by the will of god in so much that we desire titus that that as he had begun so he would also finish in you the same grace also okay so he's urging the generosity and uh, 7 through 24. Therefore, as ye abound in everything in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye burdened, but by inequality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, He that hath gathered much hath nothing, had nothing over, and he that hath gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation. But being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance, which is administered by us. Providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of man. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches in the glory of Christ. Wherefore, show ye to them, and before the churches, the proof of your love, and of your boasting, and of our boasting, sorry, on your behalf. Okay, so chapter 9, the reason to give, giving generously and cheerfully. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren, that they would go before unto you, and make up beforehand your bounty, wherefore, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also, also sparingly, 
and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplied the one of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them, and unto all men, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gifts. Okay, chapter 10 is Paul's authority and Paul's reason for boasting. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? of any man trust to himself that he is Christ's? Let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. Let such in one think this, that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Okay, Paul's reason for boasting. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they are measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God hath attributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure that is of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand but he that glorieth let him glory in the lord for not he that commendeth himself is approved but whom the lord commendeth okay chapter 11 paul contrasts himself with false apostles would to god ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. You might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been made, we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? I robbed 
other churches taking wages of them to do you service and when i was present with you and wanted i was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me the brethren which came from macedonia supplied and in all things i have kept myself from being burdensome unto you and so will i keep myself as the truth of christ is in me no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of achaia wherefore because i love you not god knoweth but what i do that i will do that i may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that wherein they glory they may be found they may be found even as we for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works i say again let no man think me a fool if otherwise yet as a fool receive me that i may boast myself a little that which i speak i speak it not after the lord but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting seeing that no man that many glory after the flesh i, I will glory also for ye suffer fools gladly seeing ye yourselves are wise for ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage if a man devour you if a man take of you if a man exalt himself if a man smite you on the face i speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak howbeit where in soever any is bold i speak foolishly i am bold also are they hebrews so am i are they israelites so am i are they the seed of abraham so am i are they ministers of christ i speak as a fool i am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure in prisons more frequent in deaths off of the jews five times received i forty stripes save one thrice was i beaten with rods once was i stoned thrice i suffered shipwreck a night and a day i have been in the deep in journeys often in perils of water in perils of robbers in perils by my own countrymen in perils by the heathen in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness and watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches who is weak and i am not weak who is offended and i burn not if i must needs glory I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forever more, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king kept the city of the Damascians with the garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Okay, chapter 12 is Paul's visions and revelations, and Paul was not a burden, and Paul's concerned about their lifestyles. It was not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Rather in the body I cannot tell, or rather out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such in one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, rather in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, basically, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I gather, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, Paul is not a burden. I am become a fool in glory, and ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. 
Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches? Except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you. For I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you a guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walk we not in the same spirit? Walk we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying. Okay, Paul's concerned about their lifestyles. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strife, backbitings, whispering, swellings, tumults, and lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be well many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed and we're going to close with chapter 13 which is his plan to visit paul plans to visit this is the third time i'm coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established i told you before and foretell you as if i were present the second time and being absent now i write to them which heretofore have sinned into all other that if i come again i will not spare since ye seek a proof of christ speaking in me which to you were is not weak but is mighty in you for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of god for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of god toward you examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish even your perfection. Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. And the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. God bless.